Sarah and welcome back to another episode of Talking Fast alongside me just like every single week is Manager Jacob and for those that watch the video version which by the way if I don't know we haven't checked in in a while we film every single episode so you should go watch the full episodes on YouTube you get the full the experience full experience full experience you get to see what we're wearing and you actually get to see what we are physically drinking first but Jacob for those that are not getting the full experience of the video what are you drinking this well, I'm week? I'm rocking an iced cap classic a summer classic. Listen, I feel like for the for the whole summer, every time we start an episode, I just start talking about how, oh, it's a classic summertime. I'm going to be eating this and I'm going to be drinking that. This is another one that, you know what, I am, I'm coming to later in the summer, but whenever I have one, it hits. Not going to lie, I got into them late in life because I wasn't really a coffee drinker of any kind. That's very surprising. Uh, What's I late know. defined as late in life? I didn't start drinking any kind of coffee until I was ooh, probably like 22. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's like, I was going to say, is there still hope for Nolan? Nolan doesn't drink any coffee is that right? ever. No, and he got through law school and he's know this. 27 years old and doesn't drink any Does coffee. Does he do any kind of caffeine? He'll, if he absolutely has to, he'll have a Red Bull, but that's the extent of mm, it. No, I don't mess with Red Bull. No. I just mess with ice caps. Those are good. Shout did out Tim Hortons. Did you ever used to switch them out for the chocolate milk did you ever used to do that no if you were late, you late like when i was in high school the thing to do was you'd order an ice cap with chalk made with chocolate milk oh instead. i had no idea you could even do yeah. that yeah i'm someone who sticks to the in, and this is like negative for me but i stick to the menu a lot of the time mm, you're not an off the board off the menu type the of guy secret thing, menu <laughs> no i'm not a big secret menu guy and i'm also uh i the only thing that i'm trying to push i haven't had one yet so i don't know if it's going to be good but i'm going to one day soon go into a cafe and i'm gonna ask for a matcha lemonade i think i had a dream a about this lemonade. at one point because i was i was i've told multiple people about this but you've never had one yourself no and everyone that i tell <laughs> they're like oh that sounds kind of weird and i'm like no no no, it fully exists at cafes all over the world and they're like i don't think so and i've looked it up and it doesn't exist but i'm gonna ask someone to make it just to see how it is a matcha lemonade so yeah. would that be lemonade mixed with matcha or like matcha added to an existing lemonade like picture you order like a like an iced matcha okay and you order a lemonade and then, and you, then you put you, them you together do swapsies <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't know what we should just bring those to to the pod and then we'll force you to it, drink it here yeah, and see how that goes it probably is weird uh what do you have though what do you have on the go <laughs> <laughs> um i'm okay i don't know how to pronounce it it's a is it a clencher a quench a, a quen quencher I think quencher yeah no L a quencher thirst, a thirst <laughs> clencher would be like if you're getting ready to flex or yeah something. a thirst it's a quencher I can't say that word anyways it's peach but the reason I got the peach one and this is my first time having it it tastes like summer nostalgia to me of going on road trips with my family and getting the peach juice from Tim Hortons. Yes. The iconic peach yeah, juice. The little, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it had like, it, I don't know, you like you can picture, if you're if I'm talking about it, I'm sure you can picture like the, the wrap in your head of what the bottle looked like and yeah. everything. Very, again, a summertime drink that every time we got on a road trip, we would go. So I'm drinking that. And it actually tastes a lot like it. So I'm getting like waves of nostalgia here. For sure. I've actually had that one as well. And I like it a lot. A plus. Would recommend. What are we watching this week, Sarah? All right. I did it. I finally started White Lotus. You did? Yeah, finally. You watched it, right? No, I haven't. No. Oh, you haven't either? No. Oh, so my God. I, th I literally thought I was the last person on the planet to watch White Lotus. No, because that makes there me feel a lot a better. I've of comparisons recently, again, to just like classic moments in White Lotus, but no, I haven't seen it. I, Do you like it? Yeah, I'm liking it. It's okay. So everyone's. This is the other issue. Is like when I say I started watching a show that everyone else is watching. I was like, well, season two is way better. But I'm like, I'm on season one. So like, don't tell right. me season two is way better when I'm still in season one. I'm sure I'm going to finish it between all my travels. Like, it'll be a good, like, download for the plane mm. show. Not a lot happens. Like, it's a weird show. Like, the, the score is very good. So it, like, makes you think stuff is going to happen. But it's just a lot of, like, people staring into the abyss and, like, just at a resort. And then the music makes you think they're doing something creepy, even though they're not. They're just, like, at a I don't know. It's really interesting. But I've never seen anything like it, which is why I'm enjoying it. Um, How many episodes in I'm only... You? There's only six episodes in, episode, in season one and I'm four episodes in. So I'm almost like, okay. so I only have two left. Um, and I don't know. I know someone dies. Like that's the whole point of it. Someone dies. I don't know how, um, but I hate almost all the characters on it. They're all insufferable. So I'm, but that means it's would, like good writing. You're supposed to hate them, right? You're supposed to. Yeah. Okay. So it's good though. Um, I will check back in once I've watched it all, see if it was worth the hype. Okay. Well, maybe this is my uh, one, the last straw in pushing me over to I it. will say... I think it's probably controversial. I'm somebody that skips the intro every time. I find the song 
excruciatingly oh, annoying. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? When that came out, and I feel like people were using it in TikToks all over and the place. And then they were using it for, um, like, DJs were starting to, like, mix it into Yeah, it. that's right. I did not like I don't find I find it very annoying and then Nolan wants to listen to it every single time and I okay this is actually a good question when you're watching a series Mm -hmm. do you ever watch the intro or are you always skipping the Vanderpump Rules intro I watch every single time (laughs) because it's like (laughs) it's so good it's so it's so bad it's like these are the best days is it a long intro or short intro it's like long they have these slow-mo like clips of them like like flipping their Baywatch. hair and pouring a drink and it's slow-mo and then Lisa Vanderpump <laughs> comes through the doors with her big hat and then they're all just like sitting there like like smoldering to the camera okay. um anyways I watch that one every single time and that's one that Nolan despises and I listen to it every single time I love it I'm typically a skipper but when I get to the last episode in a series oh then a you'll season, watch the I'll watch thing? it out of respect yeah that's that's a good move what about you what are you watching you know what? I'm throwing it back. Not something new uh, and not something that has been talked about a lot recently. But you know what I threw on because I saw that they were streaming Indiana Jones. Okay. Not talked about recently. They just came out with the first Indiana Jones okay, that's in like I, 15 that's, years or something. If you, just, if you just heard that pause right there before <laughs> me saying what I was watching, that pause was me cycling through my memories and realizing wait and one just came out that's why i'm thinking yeah, about this yeah that's and that's why they have like the categories in disney plus now that are like the like indiana jones collection granted granted the originals are like what from the 80s yeah did you know the original isn't even called indiana jones what's it called whatever it's called what's the movie called this is why we need a script we need a script right we need a googler on the side couldn't tell you no um oh it's just called raiders of the lost ark Oh, it's not called Indiana Jones and, and the Raiders. The, no, it's not Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Whoa. It's just called Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then it became Indiana Jones and for all the other ones. Did this is like a Mandela moment? Or, or no, it's moment? like a real thing. Oh, wow. Okay. It's like been it's been that. But people all, like call everything Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost okay, Ark. Okay. Maybe subconsciously then I wanted to watch these to prepare myself for the new one. <laughs> but it, there's a massive amount of time in between them. And I know that Harrison Ford now looks... Harrison, listen, I'm a big fan, but like you unfortunately look and are quite a bit older now. Yeah, but he also they also use CGI on his face in the new one. Oh, they De Niroed him? They De Niroed him. So mm. yeah. Okay, well I'm I'll just maybe I'll just keep re- revisiting <laughs> the, the old, old ones. ones. I with, like them, they're fun. With Kiwi Kwan, he's in the originals. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm you'd, having all sorts of revelations right now. You would right think now. I watch the movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Well, what are you listening to right now? Okay. Just the Indiana Jones soundtrack or what? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not That's that's it, right? Okay. Got it. No, it's not the Indiana Jones soundtrack that I'm listening to, but I'm gonna blare that over the the course of the next few days. Um, no, I'm listening to Boy Genius. <gasps> I love the, Boy Genius. Yeah, I never really got into Boy Genius. I know that they've kind of been all over the place and they're mm-hmm. on tour right now or maybe just end a tour. Um, I was a big fan of Phoebe Bridgers before, mm-hmm. but never really checked out Boy Genius. And, and so throwback to uh, another episode. I'm kind of in a transition period right now between summer and fall. Because yes. I'm bringing out the fall boy boy. <laughs> <laughs> can't speak today i'm bringing out the fall boy vibes and listening to boy genius there you would define them as like fall music i think so because it's a little less hype it's a little bit more chill mm, okay. you know it's uh it's kind of throw on the record and and clean the house kind of music oh, for me okay cool um, i like that but yeah big fan i would love to see them live they, were, them just they were just here in toronto here. in know, like june yeah. i know bummer uh but maybe next time maybe next what time. about you what are you listening to um, I'm, well, we're recording this ahead of time because I'm, when this comes out, I don't know where I am. I think I'm in Montana when this comes out. <laughs> Who knows? Where in the world is Sarah when this episode comes out? I am listening to airplane playlists. So I used to make my own playlist for flights, but now what I'm just doing is because obviously on Spotify, you can like look up other people's playlists. I'm just curious about what other people listen to on airplanes. So, um, like look like going on Spotify and looking up staring out the window thinking about life like staring at the window of an airplane thinking about life and then I see what playlists come up so I'm just picking some ones to download for my flight are there any like weirdly intimate ones where someone's thinking about like some sad thoughts or something or what's the overall vibe of an airplane it's a lot of like like sad Taylor Swift 
Okay, like so not hype Taylor Swift. Like we're listening to like. So we're getting the window seat. We're looking out the window at the world. And we're below, listening to "Come Back, little, Be Here." Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's like one of my like landing songs. I always listen to that. So we'll see. I'm gonna we'll see if I discover some new music through these. Do you do that? Playlists. Do you have a takeoff song? Um, no, but I have landing songs. I don't really have a takeoff song. Oh, do you? I do. Okay, wait. It's a national song from the new record. Uh, it is. Give me one second. And then send it to me because I'll maybe try it out. The National, off of the National's new record, My Takeoff Song. Is it Renegade with Taylor Swift? No, it's not. It should be. Uh, Tropic Morning News. And there is like this breakdown in the song. It's like the bridge where there's just like this guitar solo and it, it hits every single time. And when I was going to Europe, I was like, this is a good omen for the trip because I put it on. And you know when you don't know if like your plane's going to take off or if it's waiting for, you know, the next plane in front of it to take off. Mm-hmm. I just hit play and it's like two minutes before that guitar solo hits. And then it and takes off. as bro- soon as the wheels lifted up, the guitar solo started and I was like, wow, that was amazing. And the, oh, that's smart. Okay, maybe I'll add that to my plane playlist. <laughs> I feel like this is an episode we've talked about, talking about for quite a while now, probably since we started talking fast, but this is the therapy episode. We've, I mean, we kind of reference every episode as group therapy, but this episode is completely dedicated to therapy. We both talk about going to therapy. We talk about therapists all the time, but we wanted to do a full episode dedicated to it because we had a lot of questions, especially in the voicemail segment about it and it just doesn't feel like enough time to really deep dive and dive in so welcome to this therapy session welcome to the session what i don't even know like that's not uh, how my therapist starts a session she doesn't say welcome to the session (laughs) okay well okay this is actually a common misconception i think and holds a lot of people off from starting therapy Mm -hmm. is that like that is what a lot of people picture it's like oh god it's so formal i gotta sit down and it's gonna be a lot of like i'm gonna be put to a test or something yeah and picture like laying in like the chair on the leather couch and then like they're like taking notes with their glasses like falling off the tip of their nose i know uh so the way we're going to start this off is talk a bit about our own experiences and then we have a ton of questions from the listeners uh that we're gonna dive into that will help guide the conversation yeah so i mean i started you know when i started therapy because i talked to jacob every single day (laughs) but i (laughs) i started a year ago how about like you when have you been on and off did you start years ago are you in on and off and i'm off right now but started on okay well I think 2020 it was like deep pandemic Mm -hmm. recently post breakup Mm -hmm. obviously the world was ending Mm -hmm. and that was I think just like the final straw that like pushed was the Mm -hmm. push I needed to like get into it because Mm -hmm. I needed to get into therapy for probably a huge mountain of other reasons which is one of the questions we got a lot is like how do you know is like the time for you to start and my guess would be like if you're starting to think about it if it's you're probably yeah if you're thinking about it i would say that it's probably a good time and it's and i think the other reason uh that i was okay with trying to find a therapist and and try therapy it was actually my first time trying therapy as well mm-hmm. um was because the world also felt like there were a few like lower stakes you didn't have to like immediately go out and see a group of friends after a first session or something like that you were kind of just home and everyone was dealing with their own stuff um so it felt like a good time to get into it i actually did online i'm gonna Mm -hmm. name name drop exactly who but like one of the services oh okay that are online uh, which I felt was actually a pretty easy way as to, an entry point as for an sure. entry point. Yeah. And what I was going to say a second ago too, is like, if you're thinking about it, go ahead and try it out by taking some of the steps we're probably going to talk about here. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but don't feel like you're locking into the next like two years of your life with one person that you have to reveal no. all of your deep, dark secrets with. Like no. you could try one session with someone, it not be a good fit and then leave it at that and move on to someone new or leave it at that for a little while and, exactly. and try something new. It's And I think, th- but I do think that sometimes is daunting to people because they think that it's like you're matched with one person and it's like, a, I don't know, it's like your doctor, like you, could, you don't really change your doctor, right? Like yeah. you just like go to whoever. Um, so for me, that was part that was daunting. So what happened with me actually was, I did do therapy in university, tried to in second year because through our institution, we were able to get like free therapy and they had on campus therapists. 
Um, but there was a really long time to get into. It took me about a year before I even got in with an on-campus therapist. But that was specifically cognitive behavioral therapy. I was just going to say, what kind of therapy? Which I was not a fan of. It felt so silly to me. And look, some people, that might be what works for you. Um, the only thing I really took out of cognitive behavioral therapy is like focusing on one thing when you're like having a panic attack. So it's like, it's like what I do is I like count my fingers like this, but yeah, it's cognitive behavioral therapy essentially like a lot of the time it's like work based. So it's like workbooks or like sitting and writing or like reflections or working on like through apps, like different like apps they'd have you download, like things like headspace would be considered cognitive behavioral therapy right. when you're used or when you're used or calm, like any of those types of apps that have different resources that would be like that'd be cognitive behavioral therapy wasn't a big fan of it um i felt like it wasn't me getting to actually like, talk about how, how i'm long feeling did you, did you go through that it was like three sessions and i was yeah. out it took me a year to get on the off the wait list i did three sessions and was like this is not for me and i'm out i just stopped going yeah. i was in university too so i was just like eh, i'm healed <laughs> <laughs> and so then it took me years later and then i had always talked about it one of my best friends has been in therapy for a while and she always talked about it and i knew um that I like I wanted to do it and like her and I would always talk about it so I finally like sent an email to I did it through um a school so the center for certified psychotherapists oh, or whatever yeah, yeah, so yeah. you actually get a massive discount so my whole thing was I want people to afford to do it even if I didn't have benefits so if I yeah. ever left my job or anything happened I want people to still afford therapy so uh because they're still in school but you're going with somebody that's like it's like a, a resident doctor, like somebody that's like going through a residency program. Like they've still been in school for like seven years, but it's like the so tail they're end. younger as well. Exactly. Yes. I almost And like that's that. what I wanted. So I really wanted to, and, but younger is relative, like 30s, for sure. 40s, but yeah. like still younger. I didn't want somebody that felt like I was talking to my mom or dad. Yeah. So I got paired with someone back in the, like, this was like a year and a half ago now. And then the person's like schedule just like wasn't fitting with mine. Like every time I tried to email about setting up an appointment, like their schedule was really like strict. So immediately I knew it wasn't gonna be a fit. I go, I have a flexible schedule. I need to have one because I might not be in the country one day or like I have like to work later. I'm at World Athletics or those types of things. So I immediately was like, I don't even wanna meet this person because I can already tell it's not gonna be a fit. And then it took a long time to find another person that was a match for me. I didn't actually meet with any other therapist, but I kind of waited a bit, followed back up last September. So and then the school then, are you like, are you getting profiles of, of no, but no, but like they just, or? no, they just pair you based off okay. of certain things. And then other things like my friend also went through the school. So like they would never pair me with her therapist. So it's more like a concierge service. Yeah. So like, like they, it's like their instructors are pairing you with someone based yeah, off of your yeah. schedule, what you were looking for. I was looking for a woman. I was looking for somebody um, in their thirties. I didn't want somebody that was too much older that than was me. actually surprising to me when i i mean again it's it's different but it's somewhat the same uh with the service that i used online uh that there's i didn't realize how much choice there was yeah, that sounds curate. silly because of course why wouldn't there be for sure uh but that was something that i was not aware of and mm -hmm. it's just like of course if you're going to be uh, talking to someone about intimate details. You want to be feeling comfortable with For them. Sure. And there are a ton of different factors that go into your comfort level with someone and being able mm -hmm. to relate with them is something that I I wanted as well. Yeah, and I had specific things. Like I actually, in because you can put whatever you want on these forms. I, in my form, and obviously this is like a me scenario, it's not for everyone, but I purposely put, because... The school is in Toronto, so I figured the person that would be my my therapist would be based in Toronto. But mine's been completely off online; like it's all through Zoom. Like I don't yeah. see my therapist in person, um, which again works better for my schedule. But I literally put like I want them to have never seen one of my TikTok videos or have any sense or have ever heard of who I was. Yeah. Um, because even if it had been through like a friend of a friend or had seen a video of mine at one point or something, that immediately made it feel like they knew a version of me that I didn't. I wanted them to be like completely blank. So I. Like she brought it up in our very first session. She goes, I just want to make it clear. I don't know who you are. I've never downloaded that app. I don't know anything about it. Which I think would be the case for most people, right? That for sure. don't have some kind of public facing persona. Mm -hmm. Is that, yeah, you, you're going into someone who's a complete stranger, which can be intimidating. Like for you, it sounds obviously like yeah. that's what you wanted, but that can also be intimidating. Yeah. But then at the same time, so the the therapist that I had for the longest time uh, was in he was actually in Chicago because it was okay. all same kind of thing it was Zoom sessions, um, 
But I liked that because for the same reason, I'm like, you're, you have no idea there's, what it, I, it's all based on how you explain things. Like truly, like there's no other reference point, which I love too. Like there's no. Yeah. And okay. So that was actually, speaking of the first session, that was something that was like a instant weight off of my shoulders. Mm-hmm. And for anyone thinking about it and like feeling intimidated, this is maybe like helpful information, but like when after my first session, I was just like, wait, you, you weren't, he wasn't sitting there trying to, um, keep like put his perspective on what I've just told you Mm -hmm. and you weren't giving me like advice based on like all these other relationships and friendships and stuff that you may or may not, you know, understand, understand the depths of you're just someone who's, yeah, being a mirror for my thoughts and giving like helpful advice uh, and ways of thinking about things and asking questions to maybe help me reframe things. Uh, but that was refreshing because I just Mm -hmm. assumed that I'm going to sit down and someone's going to try to fix me essentially. And that's the number one piece of advice I give whenever anyone's considering doing it. It's like, imagine having a person that is highly educated in a subject and like can help you and they know nothing about anyone you or anyone else in your life it is so refreshing because how often do you actually get to talk to somebody that knows nothing about you or everything in your life or like has no other ulterior motive when it comes to it like you're like you're literally paying them to sit there and listen to you so well, that's the other thing it's like they're your employee almost you know what I, mean? like- <laughs> I was gonna say in your brain it's like a client <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's true though it's so, like they're they are there to help you so like example with me like every single week i would start every session going like um like she'd be like hi sarah i go hi how are you and then she eventually like two months ago goes you don't have to ask me how i am like that's not why we're here (laughs) and i go i know but it's like it's i just feel like i have to and then we break that down like okay why do i feel like i have to this is interesting and like you don't have to get into all the details but like what would a typical session look like structure wise do you do pleasantries do you yeah so we used to do a lot more it's really interesting so it kind of leads into like the how do you know your therapist is the one um and i knew my therapist was the one when she finally called me out on like stop putting my like public persona forward and just like be real with me because Mm. i was for i'd say the first six sessions that's a long time I was putting on like my like I don't know my like best foot like I was putting on like who I am I'm to like that everyone. too I'm, I'm like I want I, I, you, oh, you're you want a stranger them to like and you. I want you to like exactly. me I want you to think I'm the funniest guy ever oh I'm really bad for trying to, to crack jokes I want, yeah I want you to like um think that I'm I've been doing yeah. the homework and oh I did a little research on this I'm yeah exactly about that it's just like and it would be so annoying when he would fire back and just be like he wouldn't say this, but this is how I interpret it, that I'm trying too hard, right? 100%, and like, take exactly. away all that bullshit. So it took, it took a solid amount of sessions before I finally, and then we, like, the next week she was like, Did, why was last week's session different? That's how she started it. And I was like, mm. because I was like, actually me. Like, you could tell, even just everything but my body language, I could just tell it was my myself that probably my closest friends see versus, it's not that different. It's just like, it's, you're not putting on that, like, people-pleasing self. Yeah. So that's how I knew she was the one, because when she was able to call me out on that, I was like, oh, okay, like, you, like, are actually seeing this. It's not just me talking into the abyss. And, like, I feel, like, because the first few sessions, you're just talking. They're just taking notes. It's not until later that you're, they're really bringing stuff back or, like, noticing Which patterns. makes sense. Like, if they're, like, to compare it to a writer of a TV show, they've got to kind of understand who the cast of characters are. For sure. Are, and they'll the ask, dynamics they'll ask that for, are at play yeah, with exactly. you and your family and friendships and all sorts of stuff. Because then to, now I'm at a point where I can talk freely about, like, people are referenced like names and she'll know who I'm talking about but for me a typical session is I open up my laptop and I join and then she pops up we do I always go can you hear me because my mic never works <laughs> and then I used I used to I don't do it anymore but I used to always go she go hello how are you and I go hi I'm good how are you and then she would go I'm good because like, what else is she gonna say I'm not like allowed to know anything about her life right yeah it's like part of it um but now what I do, and it's just the way that like the session makes the most sense for me is I like to break down my week to her because then that's how it helps me remember things I wanted to talk to her about. So I don't take notes. I don't go, oh, I need to talk to Diana about that. Like what I do is I go, okay, so this week I did this. I overall felt this and I went, did this, 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 this. And that's just like what works for me. So I'll go, um, I don't know my last session as an example I'll be like okay this week was a really busy one I ended up I stayed late at work this day I did this 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 and I'll kind of go through it and then as um I go through the week she'll stop me on things that she sees as patterns or whatever and then who knows then we just end up down a trail sometimes I'm crying by the end of it and sometimes she's just helping me solve my career problems so there's no real way to know how it's going to end up are there ever any days when you're just not into it you don't want to you don't want to do it 
Have you canceled sessions? I've never canceled a session. Um, no, I haven't. I look, I love talking. <laughs> so I love, I love therapy. I love, I look forward to it. The days I'm not looking forward to it are the days that I know there's something really important I want to talk to her about or like yeah. something happened in the week that I, when I already know, cause I have this relationship with her now, like I know what she's going to reference and I know it, like whether it's something from my childhood or whether it's something that like was my parents or whatever. Like when I know she's like, when something happened, but that's also just you knowing that. No, you for know sure. I mean? But it's like me not wanting to address it. Like yeah. I'm trying to like, <laughs> if I didn't have therapy, I would be suppressing it, <laughs> but I know she's going to bring it up. And then I, it, I hate, I hate crying. I just, so I, I just hate crying. And again, that's something that I work on in therapy is like, why do I hate crying? Like, why mm-hmm. is that a thing that I try to avoid? So when I feel like it could be a session that leads to that I like get really anxious and then what I'll I used to do I'm getting better at it I used to like wait till the very end and tell her what drop there and I, I feel did like it they must deal with that all the time I I did it last a couple weeks ago for the first time and she was going on vacation and she goes she goes Sarah we've worked on you this you know You're- what you just you know what you did Sarah <laughs> I was like I was like, no, I didn't. I swear. She goes, you knew what you were doing. And I was like, you have then on the flip side of that, then do you have like for a hard session like that and say you Mm -hmm. did use the full time to kind of get into, which ideally when I'm feeling really anxious, yes, I will. Like when I feel like I need to tell her something, I'll splurt it out at the beginning. And do you feel, uh, lighter after a session? percent. Yeah. I, it's not directly after I, so fun fact sometimes I used to come and record the podcast after therapy we literally had to stop doing that because I needed more more time because there's a couple like heavy sessions I had then I was like um I had to come back and film this also what I was noticing I was doing is I wasn't allowing myself to really get into it in therapy because I had a full face of makeup on and I was just doing it as like a checklist thing and she knew too like it was one of those things where we realized that I wasn't opening up as much when I knew I had to be somewhere after whether it was a dinner an event a podcast something so well I think there's also a difference between uh, going to therapy and going to the sessions mm-hmm. and committing to therapy and actually like putting in the time and effort to better yourself. For sure. And I'm not saying that about you. I'm saying that about me. Like that's a commitment that has mm-hmm. to, it has, it to, has happen. to kind of happen for there to be so any progress. That's why I had to change my schedule around a bit to make sure it truly isn't the one day that I'm like the most free. And I usually don't have, I usually give myself a solid couple hours after. Um, Cause I never know how it's going to go. Some days it's like so easy and I'm like feeling great. And we've just had a really good conversation and whatever. And then other days I'm like, crying and then you're just like but trying to be right like there's like, no way to know both like celebrating having a good session mm-hmm. maybe breakthrough just feeling good about it and then needing that extra time after a you know hard session uh to cry or just process that is uh those are both equally important i would say and that's something that i think was disappointing for me oh, who really? just wanted to oh well no just because i wanted to uh go to therapy, do the sessions. And then as soon as the sessions were done, I'd be like you said, kind of check, went to therapy, exactly. Exactly. we're good. The, uh, unfortunately, that's not, how it works. that's not really how it works. <laughs> and, and not if you want to get anything out of it. Cause for the first few sessions, that's what I was doing. I go, I love therapy. She just sits there and listens to me. La la la. I just right. go and talk. Like when they're doing research, like background, like background is when they're like asking you about like, I did a week on family, friends, yeah. siblings, whatever. But yeah, if you actually want to get something out of it, you need to, be willing to be like open and like when you feel yourself not wanting to talk about something you have to allow yourself to yeah and that could take time for people like it took time for me oh god it took me six months it's taking me i still i I just told you i still do it and i've been doing it for a year now yeah it's all a process and i think that's why like sometimes too and why i'm not currently in therapy is like sometimes and i felt this i needed um a little break from it because there was Mm. like i was processing a lot like it wasn't just stuff that was from the pandemic and a breakup or anything like that like we were opening cans of well because what you realize is that obviously you figure out what's like things that like that that happen are all a reflection of things that just happened to you earlier in your life for sure a hundred percent there's no trauma that's left unturned when you're in therapy like you'll be bringing up stuff that you thought you were over yeah thought you were over that's yeah. gonna be every session but so i guess I'll, the question then would be for me for you then is how do you make the most of the therapy when you're in a good chapter in your life then was that a, a thing that helped you or was that a factor in you deciding to stop or was it just because it was actually the opposite so it was like too hard no i think that i i think that like probably pretty soon i'll be entering a new chapter of okay mm-hmm. let's deal with the next <laughs> set of things that <laughs> you know, the, the, all the ton of doors that opened from the, the first round, mm-hmm. um, with a new therapist though, I think too, mm-hmm. like a, getting a new perspective on things and working through different issues, 
uh, is probably something that I, I think is going to be beneficial for me at least. Yeah, for sure. Um, what was the question again? The question was, um, how do you make the most of therapy when you're in a good chapter in your life? Like, do you ever think there's like a time where it's like when you're fit? Oh, Cause you have finished, like you've like stopped it. I haven't done that before. I'm like in it and I haven't stopped yet. Yeah. So it was like, do you think there's like a, I'm cured and I don't need to go anymore. Like, a. well, I think that that was the, um, that was another huge shift that happened for me when, when just like thinking about what therapy is is that especially when you're looking at your mental health, it's mm-hmm. not really a let's get to a finish line and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. You're cured of all the issues you've ever had. <laughs> it's really more a practice. Yeah, it's um, like working out. Yeah, it's ex- exactly. And so sometimes maybe you're in the I'm in an off season right now. Um, but in order to maintain and progress, mm-hmm that you know maybe good spot that you're in uh yeah you got to kind of continue going i yeah. think and that could look different for um for what that practice looks like so sure. i was doing regular talk therapy for the longest time which i felt was beneficial uh and that's probably what most people envision when they think of therapy mm-hmm. right and sitting down like we're talking about now and, and kind of speaking with your therapist but there are a ton of other types of therapy as well mm-hmm. uh that I would be curious about checking out as oh, well. Oh, interesting. Yeah, there's one called IFS, which is like internal internal family systems, which is a whole like structural breakdown of how the therapist works with a client, which seems oh, pretty cool to me. Interesting. My grandfather was a family therapist for counselor, therapist, same thing, whatever. He was a family therapist for like mm. ever, like couples. He was the couples coach. What about you? So when, like, are, do you feel like you're at a spot? I am. Where no. are we right now? Okay. So <laughs> I think I've talked about this before. I mean, I've talked about it on the podcast before where it's like, I hate the whole sold idea that like you're happy and then that's like it. It's like yeah. you, you find happiness and then it's like, yeah, life is perfect. Whatever. That's not how it works. So I no, I, I really like, and since I started doing it, I've never saw it as like, there's something where there's an end game. And to be honest, like through seeing my close friends that do it, like, some of them had like gone through a bunch of stuff and then they were in an incredible spot, finally in a good spot. And then like, bang, something else happens. And they were so grateful. They already had a therapist that knew and trusted them to, and they trusted to know that like, cause things are going to happen. Like uh, one of my things is I've dealt with a lot of grief in my life. Like I've, I've grown up around a lot of death and that's like a big thing I work through, but that's inevitably going to happen again. And who w- I would yeah. rather have the person that I've talked to every single week for hopefully years than to understand like how I react to things and how to work through because life is life and things happen. And I, regardless if I'm in a good spot for like years, I'd still love to be like checking it. Maybe I know people that go less, like they don't do once a week. They go every other week when they're in a really good season or like once a month just for a check-in. But I, right now I'm still so new to it. The once a week for sure. Like this is the longest I've been without it. Like we're doing a solid month. Um, and that's the longest I've gone without talking to Diana, which is like really stressful for me, but it's good because it's like I'm learning how to like not have that as part of my routine, but no, I don't see it ending anytime soon. How long are your sessions? 50 minutes. 50 minutes. I, I, occasionally what you can do, and I haven't done it yet, um, but if you really want to dive into something, you can book like a two hours or a 90 minute session or something. And I think those might be beneficial once in a while for me because sometimes we're like just getting to something and then it's like there's three minutes left and I'm like... I have to sit here and just think about it by myself. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought the same when I was doing it as well because sometimes it's just not enough time. No, especially exactly. when you have you're just like oh I got to give I'm a big backstory guy as yeah, well. Yeah, me too. I'm like I want to give you all of the. You got to know all the context. You got to know all like the situations with everyone and like who the dynamics that at play with yeah, everything. That also frustrated me though when I was working with my therapist because it would be like I'd give this massive story and then and then it would just be like one question that he would ask me and it was that kind of reframed everything and made it very simple and I was like well I, mean, <laughs> I guess it's almost like that's the whole point though <laughs> but no I think it's a it's a practice and if you look at it like going to the gym and I've always looked at it that way like working out like living a healthier lifestyle I think you do it through the ebbs and the flows and sometimes I have sessions where it's like it's just nice to have a person to bounce ideas off of and just like um, I don't have anything like quote unquote wrong at the moment, but it's like someone that I can just like, who doesn't know anyone else in my life. I can just ask some questions to like, and get another opinion. Well, I think about therapy like that too, is that it, it is a tool within your toolkit for, uh, living a generally healthy life. 
Um, mental health is obviously something that can benefit greatly from that, but it also has like physical effects on your physical health too, when you're dealing with things and Mm -hmm. working through some of your issues. Um, but yeah, so like working with a therapist for me, running has always been about mental health, talking about other types of random therapy as well. And then medication and that kind of stuff too. Right. For sure. But yeah, I I was di- like I have a diagnosed anxiety disorder, but like I've never taken medication for it, like me personally. Same, yeah, um, but like if that's the route for you, just make sure you're obviously consulting with a doctor and yeah. or your therapist or whatever. But there are you're right. There's other forms of therapy. I there's also group therapy, which is really interesting to me. Um, I've never had a like when I was like going through cognitive behavioral therapy at TMU, there was the option to go to group therapy oh, interesting. Um, for like grief or for whatever. And I've like, I didn't, I personally didn't do it, but I know some people that group therapy has been a really beneficial thing for them. Granted, I think like there's a big stigma around group therapy. I think people hear group therapy and think like just AA or any of those yeah. um, institutions that exist that are such great resources for people. But there's group therapy about like so many things. And sometimes that's a more, cost efficient way that people can afford it um one of the questions we got a lot about was like how do you start like where do you start if i'm trying to find a therapist like what happens you can as jacob said you went to like an online resource i went through an institution that's a great way to find one but also if you have benefits at your work most places most like um insurance companies allow you like a few free sessions to find you a therapist that works almost all of my friends have like used these free sessions to be able to like find a therapist you can actually try out a couple different ones yeah and then referrals obviously like i would advise not going to the same therapist that your friends go to i think that's like a really messy and most people (laughs) won't let you but i think like a referral to um, a center or like a certain office is always a good place to start as well. Yeah. And I think psychology today publishes a lot of, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, access to different therapists with little bios and that kind of stuff too, which is another good resource. But yeah, if you've like been thinking about doing it, that's usually the best place to start is just like inquiring. I also think we're very grateful to live in an era where therapy is really normalized. Like the fact that we talk about it so openly on this podcast and in this space, like I don't even think like when I was doing cognitive behavioral therapy a few years ago, I could have done that. Do you think, have you always thought that way? Like, have you been always pro therapy? I have No, I definitely, I, I definitely I, wasn't. I wasn't anti-therapy. Well, I, you know what? I will. I was. I, was. I didn't. And, but I, not in a way that was like, oh, therapy sucks. It was a, well, you have to be really like, me- like, you have to be like in yeah, a really like, bad place. That's great for other people. That's fantastic oh, for other people. Like I'm sure that they that's wild to me. Just, that. you seem like someone that would have totally bought into it, but I, guess, but I don't I guess know. Maybe if you maybe four years ago, yeah, like, maybe, that guy's wild. but that's true though. <laughs> but it's true. Cause I've only known you post there. It's, this, it's yeah. the same scenario. So yeah. for me though, yeah, I, I don't think I was ever anti, but I don't think the conversations were the same. I don't think it was as normalized. And I don't think like, I think when I was like, like the only reason I ended up doing the cognitive de- behavioral therapy at Ryerson, the only reason I started doing cognitive behavioral therapy at TMU was because I knew one person that had openly talked about their depression on Instagram and I barely knew him. Yeah. He was in our program and I messaged him and was like, I think this is like how I'm feeling, like how you've talked about on Instagram. Can you like meet me for a coffee? And he gave me the book, The Defining Decade <laughs> to read. Oh, what's um, that? It's a book about how like life in your 20s actually sets you up for the rest of your life. And like okay. it's, um, and it's, it's a really great book and it's by a psychologist uh anyways he gave me that book and he like gave me the the resources to understand like how to go talk to the doctor on campus then get diagnosed and all that stuff so uh, that was one person whereas now like i know probably 10 to 15 people that are actively in therapy for sure which is like that was not the case even nine years ago so i think it's a lot more of an open conversation so yeah and i want to clarify too my anti-therapy what i meant by that as well as like that was more so coming from my own insecurities yeah no 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 of course of course you literally did it no one thinks you were (laughs) anti no i know but i do think the conversations are a lot different over the past few years i think everyone's a lot more open to it and i think there's also a lot more resources like even like my employee benefits at my work like changed recently like they used to only cover yeah. a certain percentage of therapy and now they cover unlimited which For is sure. crazy and that's like the service that i used didn't exist probably five years ago or, yeah or 
or something like that. Just making it more accessible for everyone. But if you have any other questions about therapy or therapists, but well, we reference therapy all the time on this podcast, I'm sure you're going to hear it, but you can always send us a question um, on Instagram to either of us. We're both pretty open about it. Or if you ever want to have extra conversations, you can uh, check out voicemail and send us submissions there. And that's where we, and that's where we're going to go next. <laughs> voicemail segment where we try to give advice as best as we can and you can always message us at talking fast show on instagram or shoot us an email talking fast show at gmail.com jacob kick us off with the first voicemail question. first voicemail question today sarah what's one flight essential you have that you'll never get on the plane without noise canceling headphones yeah i used to be like i used to not be like that intense about the headphones but now I can't sleep without the like true noise canceling headphones. So mm. I have two pairs. I have Galaxy Buds that are like the little purple ones yeah. that go in my ear. The noise cancellation on those are so killer. But on something like a nine hour flight, so battery, they'll probably die halfway through. Okay. Um, on like a on like a nine hour flight, like I'm going this week. So I also will bring my Sony's, which are my overhead. So overhead, my Sony ones, I'll listen to. I'll use when I'm actually like awake and listening to music or something but the galaxy buds i'll put in when i'm sleeping or and trying are you to sleep listening to anything when you're l- no it's just like it just, it's just it just dulls all the sound so yeah, it makes yeah, it a lot smaller even like you don't realize how loud an airplane is until like you take it off noise canceling and it's then, always the bathroom i'm going to the i go, go to the washroom on a plane and take off my earbuds yeah and I then want you, them to fly down the that's so, i never thought toilet. about that that's smart uh but yeah it is loud you realize like not just people talk i'm not even talking people talking just like the general noise about how much probably you, good for your ears too to just not have that kind of for like sure so uh for sh- noise canceling and i used to not live by that but now it's like i absolutely need noise canceling headphones that's good mine goes a little bit in a different direction but i cannot get on a plane without a like drink of some kind in a bottle to just know that I don't oh I'm have the to same depend. way I'm but the same way that's that would be my non-negotiable like you need at least a water yeah. your own so you'll even yeah, pay yeah. like the absurd airport water fees if you forgot a bottle I'm I'll pay I'll pay fifty dollars for a bottle of water <gasps> if if I can get it before I get on the plane because I just don't want to like you know the the if turbulence happens and they can't get to you with I a know. drink or drink service is taking forever. Or if it's like a really like, long flight, like when you went to Europe, they only do the drink service once every little while and they give you a little tiny Dixie cup of water essentially. Yeah, exactly. So it's not enough. Like you want to be able to drink your water when you want to. And also you get so dehydrated okay, in airplanes. Okay, this is what I was going to say. I don't know. Obviously it's the, the dehydration, but like that somehow dehydration for me is like linked to panic somehow. So if I have like a dry mouth, I'm, I start freaking out a little bit. I'm like, this is not, this is not the not the comfortable to, to do this. Yeah. So it's always to a drink for me. That's smart. I also think like when everyone's like, it's so much more expensive at the airport, like water, like a bottle of water is kind of expensive at any convenience store. It's not really that different. Maybe That's it's true. like $4 versus $3, but it's worth it to have the flexibility to have it whenever you want. I agree. The next voicemail question is, what song do you wish your favorite artist would cover? So for me, it would be Taylor Swift. But for you, pick somebody and a song that you wish they would cover. Okay, this is big. You can I also, also like pick the Taylor cross. Swift if you want. But. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cross genre covers. Me too. A lot of the time, um, you know who I and he. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this. It's not really super cross genre, and he's already kind of done it. But have you seen the Post Malone? Uh, like country covers that he's done yeah. at least a couple yeah. I would like him to do some more of those but I would say like any pop artist that more or less and I'm throwing Post Malone under the bus here produces just like mm-hmm. trying to chart pop music if you can give me a little bit more of your artistry so if like Post Malone was doing a Bonnie Vera song I'd be here for it I want Taylor Swift to cover, cover I want Taylor Swift to cover any rock music I don't oh. really have a specific specific song in mind. I don't really have anything in mind. But when it was the 1989 World Tour, she did We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, but as like a rock cover. Ooh. And it's sick. And when everyone was like, when it's Taylor's version, she should sing it that way. She didn't, obviously. But like, I was obsessed with that version of it. And I she has like 
when she can go deep in her register like she can get this like grungy rocky sound so i would love i don't really have a specific one i just think like more into the rock genre would be like and really cool T taylor can obviously play guitar but like could she shred yeah she guitar? does she, it like smash that i would love that like, <laughs> you might, I'd bring out like when she was at the met gala and had like the blonde like really short hair and like was wearing that silver dress on her with like intense eyeliner and then a guitar and she's smashing it on stage every night. So instead of giving a kid a hat in the crowd, she gives them like a half broken guitar. <laughs> that would be sick. So I don't care it. what song, but just I want Taylor Swift covering rock. She's done like every other genre at this point. So like, and might she's as well. probably running out of music from the vaults and uh the surprise songs right she's gonna have to start breaking out some new stuff. well she's already got like folky stuff she's already got country she's got pop like give me a rock album that's what i would want amazing so and our final question uh, our final question of voicemail is what is your favorite running accessory what is something you cannot run without this is a uh it gets a bit personal for me on this one uh i'll hold my phone i have a little running belt a fanny pack that if I'm well, like racing, I'll have that. Uh, but otherwise, I'll typically f hold my phone. That's what Nolan does too. I don't know how you, you do it. Where's like it from? Uh, nondescript, uh, Amazon probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the time I'll ruin them after a little while anyway. Mm, Exploding true. gels or just wear and tear. <sighs> true. Uh, for me though, it is the, and if it's your first race, if you're going out to training for a half marathon or something like that, Vaseline. Oh, well, like, did you not use Vaseline the first time you ran like a half marathon or something? I've had some, I've had some issues. In oh the my past. God. That's wild. I use this thing. <laughs> well, it's similar. I use this thing called body glide. Oh so yeah. So it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's just like on a stick as opposed to yeah. like Vaseline. Um, and it's great. So I haven't had to like, I literally, my legs haven't chafed at all while running longer distances. It's been amazing. With that. With that. It's incredible. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's life changing. It's a, it's a, an accessory that you maybe wouldn't think about, especially if you're just getting into running. That's but true. if you go from like, if you're like couch to 5k kind of vibes right now and you're moving up to a 10k or slightly longer runs, you're going to need it. That's something that you probably don't learn it the hard way is all I'm saying. I actually would have never thought to use it until a friend of mine messaged me because she had just done like the eight and a half K. She goes, this is the first one where I felt my legs chafing. So like by body glide. Yes. And then I did. And I was like, I've never had an issue since, which is amazing. Yes. Important. I would say my favorite running accessory is, I don't know if my belt is my favorite. Cause like if I didn't have to wear a belt, I wouldn't. But the issue is, I like listening to music and I don't like holding my phone because I used to hold my phone yeah. and then I was just like swapping it back and forth. I was curious about the vests. Mm. Like people, like it's very trendy now water, to wear the vests. Like Solomon vest But I don't drink enough water. Like I just don't like. They look cool though. I know. <laughs> they do look cool. Uh, that's half the reason I'm interested well, I'm in gonna, it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think for a marathon would make a lot more sense than a half. I don't think I need it for a half. Also in a race, they have water. Like, yes, but I would say forget the race water and go with your own water. Really? It can mess you up sometimes. Yeah. If you mess up a, a pass off of a, a water cup, which, you know, happens bless the volunteers, but sometimes they're not super on it. Okay. So now I'm back on the vest. It's not my accessory yet, but maybe I buy the vest. I say buy the vest. Because I hate the, I, I have a belt and I don't mind it. I just hate that it can feel like the thing. I can feel it like. I fully Flapping. at the end of my last marathon with the like the running belt thing, fanny yeah. kind of thing, but it was tight fanny. Uh, I fully had a bruised abdomen. Okay, that see that's what I'm worried about. I hate that I can like feel it. and then also right now I have this like makeshift like water bottle that I like, put it through my belt, but it like sits in the small of my back and like feels a little weird. Like I can feel it Buy moving up and down. Buy the vest. Maybe or if someone wants to send me a vest, I will, <laughs> I will gladly start rocking if one. If you're sending them out, send it to. Yeah. <laughs> Do they do look cool? I, I, that's that helps. I think people look cool with the vest. I couldn't tell if people did or not. So hundred percent, they do look cool. Okay, then I'll go by the next episode. I will have a. I'll come wear in. it to the next wear episode. <laughs> what are you drinking? Just drinking my water out of you my vest. hundred <laughs> percent. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Talking Fast. We'll be back every single Wednesday. The next one, the one after that, the one after that, until all of you stop listening to us. Make sure you give us a five star review wherever you're listening to this. And again, if you forgot, we do full video podcasts. Throw down some YouTube comments. Go comment on YouTube and watch the YouTube version because that's the best version because you get to look at us the entire time. Thank you for watching, listening, being here, and we'll see you next Wednesday.